Hi, I'm Jeremy Thake, and with me today is Jeremy Kelly. Hi, glad to be here. Thanks for joining me, mate. Yeah, so no in this video, we're going to talk about the SharePoint APIs on the Microsoft Graph. And I guess my first question is like, if I'm not a SharePoint person, I've not been around this space, why as a developer would it make sense for me to use SharePoint APIs on Microsoft Graph? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, SharePoint has really become the backbone of a bunch of different features in Office 365. So whether you just want to store your collaborative documents in a shared location for your team, whether you're using Microsoft Teams and, and want access to the information that backs that, if you're using an Office 365 group, all of those things are backed by SharePoint sites. Mm -hmm. So you get the power of document libraries to store documents and files. Uh, you get the power of lists, um, which are great tools, um, and you can then power those with Power Apps and Flow on the, the UX side of things. Oh, yeah. And you can use graph APIs to work with the data uh, under the hood. And then there's this notion of pages as well, I guess, that you could create pages and have those as tabs in a team. Yeah, tab. so modern pages have been a, a great new feature kind of moving forward from the traditional website design in SharePoint into a truly modern, modern authoring experience. Um, and those, we have a beta API available for working with those today. Um, we're working hard on getting that um, expanded and more features available. But yeah, pages are, are great for communicating status about projects, for creating internal marketing documents about a project. Mm -hmm. Um, we use them quite quite heavily within our own team here at, here at Microsoft. And one of the benefits I've found as a developer with SharePoint lists, um, which is kind of you know, just storing data as opposed to files, yep. like a document library would be, was that you know it doesn't mean I have to go spin up a database or something to store information. So, like, what do you see customers using lists for at that kind of that level? Uh, you can use it for all kinds of things. Um, I use it personally for recording submissions from teammates, uh, which are suggestions for, for cool things we might want to do on the team. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a basic sign up flow that has some custom columns that describe, you know, what is the thing you want me to share? What are some notes about it? And then I can go in and fill in things like due dates or when was this featured? All right. kind, any kind of metadata that I might want to store about some process that that's going on or a, a task list. Um, SharePoint's really great at that. Um, and I think our APIs do a pretty good job of letting you access all of that data programmatically. Uh, you can create columns, which is great also. So if you're building a solution in a client that you want to install effectively some data into SharePoint, you can do that and have it all provisioned at runtime as well. And there's different data types. Yep. The usual date times and choices. Date and times, text fields, yep. all different uh, SharePoint stuff. There are a few col things that we're still working on, some column types that aren't supported yet, but we'll get there and have full coverage in time. That's awesome. Yep. And so with that, like if I'm creating those lists, I'm creating those documents, that's storing it in the customer's site. It's not, I'm not having to do anything on my side, on the dev side of where that data gets stored. Right. So you just, you can access either by ID, which is our preferred method because yep. everything in the graph is generally referenced by ID, by ID, but you can also do it by path. And we'll take a look when we get to our demos, we'll show how you can access sites by path as well, because that's, um, when most people are thinking about how they're working, that's what they're doing is thinking yeah. in the path to the site rather than the ID to the site. So Awesome. And so like anything, the Graph Explorer is definitely the best place to go yeah. look into these SharePoint APIs. So do you want to show some of these right now? Sure. Let's take a look at what we can do. Awesome. All right. So I've got a demo user here uh, and we're looking at their OneDrive for Business and we can see I've got a whole bunch of files already here. Uh, and let's go over to Graph Explorer where we can... Uh, start seeing how we manipulate that with the actual APIs. So by default, Graph Explorer is giving me the me context. And if I want the OneDrive part of that, I can just go me drive. Me drive is going to give me my OneDrive account, whichever user is logged in. So as a developer, I don't have to worry about who logged in, what their ID is, even what their email address is. We give you the shortcut on that translates all that information under the hood. So if I was an Outlook.com user, it would show me my OneDrive yep. that I have for my personal, but if I logged in with my corporate yep. credentials, I'd see my OneDrive for business. Yep. I use it with my personal account to look at my music library from the file system all the time just because I'm that kind of developer. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it works great for both business and personal, same path. 
Uh, so I've got the drive here and the drive is really the object of the OneDrive. So you can see this doesn't list any of the files in the output, but it does give me information like uh, what the web URL is, what type it is. So this says business here because we're logged into OneDrive for business, who created it, in this case, the system account, who owns it. Um, so let's actually look at some of the more useful parts here. So I can do drive root. Root is gonna be the root folder. So now I have a pointer and you can see here there's a folder facet in the output. And it says, hey, there's 34 children here, which are gonna be the top level of files and folders in my, uh, in my OneDrive for Business. So I'll add children. And now I can start to get some interesting things here. So I've got a set of nodes that all represent the folders and files that are here. So I have a Contoso Electronics, it looks like this is probably a folder because I don't see an extension on that. And there's the folder facet again. It says that has 13 children. And if we keep scrolling down, we can probably find a file. There's the images folder, there's private info. And here we go, here's annual financial report draft.docx. So now I've got fi a file that's gonna have a different set of information associated with it. Um, that's all really great. So now I can start working with things. I can get their IDs out if I want to continue to, to work. Um, and so typical operations I might want to do within files and folders. Let's say I want to upload a new file. Um, and so that's as easy as simply putting in the name of the file. So if I want my file.txt and the part that I'm going to put into the file is the content. So the, the slash content represents what's in there. If this were a binary file and I was using this through the SDK, I would pass the stream into that. Um, but in this case, we can just put, this is my content, exclamation point. And we're gonna do a put operation. This only works in Graph Explorer when I'm signed in as a particular user. If I use the default demo, it doesn't let me modify. Um, so I've signed in, so we'll do a put. We got some information back. So now this gives me the same information as if I were accessing a file that already existed. So we can look at some of the output here. If I want to pass this file over to another service, I can use the download URL to pass over, say, to Microsoft Azure if I were running cognitive services on, on input, um, if I didn't want to, to process the content directly. Um, so that's great. I've got all the other data. There's the file name, myfile.txt. Let's quickly pop back over to OneDrive and there's myfile.txt that we just uploaded a few seconds ago. We're gonna click on that and voila, this is my content. So we did a quick put right from Graph Explorer. We uploaded a new file. Um, the other thing we can do that is super useful if you're building a rich client integration is instead of working with its data, I could get the OneDrive previewer to be able to show that file. So I can use the preview API here, and I'm gonna do a post. I'm gonna clear out the, the body of the request. I'm gonna run the query. And it's gonna come back with a get URL. This could return a post for certain file types. Uh, but we're gonna copy this URL. I'm gonna paste it into a new window just so we can see what happens. And what I'm gonna get is OneDrive's viewer that I can embed into an iframe. Nice. So if I were building a SharePoint framework web part yeah. or any other client application that can host an iframe, I can now render that file. And that includes all 320 file types that OneDrive supports. I can programmatically get a, a preview URL to embed into my application. That's so that's really pretty neat. powerful. That yeah. is really cool. Yep. So I think that's most of the basics. We've done download, we've done upload, we've done preview. You can do all kinds of other things if you want to look at the, the, the data that's in the file, if you want to manipulate um, sharing links, send, oops, send permissions. I'm just gonna switch this back to a get. And you can see here, uh, I also, I used the file name in order to get access to the file. Right, so, you so I didn't have, to, have to have the ID. There are cases where IDs are helpful. They're more, more 
uh, performant in some cases, mm -hmm. but especially for uploading files where you don't have an ID yet, you just give it the arbitrary name of the thing you're looking for, specifically in the file path, and it will it will find it for you. And with the show more samples there, we actually have pre-baked OneDrive samples in Graph Explorer, so yep. that so you we, do want to explore. We can turn these on. Uh, OneDrive is right here. I'll click off. And so this will give you all of the, let's say I want the files that are shared with me. I can do drive shared with me, and it will return me all the, the different files that I've had shared to me. Um, and so these samples are a great way to get going, um, and you can always look at the API documentation as well if you're looking for the next level of advanced features. So that's just some of the stuff you can do with Microsoft Graph and SharePoint. Uh, there's lots more. SharePoint is a very broad product and has lots of capabilities, and we're always bringing more to the product as well. Keeping you busy. Very, very busy. <laughs> so with anything, if you want to learn, please go to graph.microsoft.com. There's a getting start at the top. You can select your language, and there's tutorials and quick starts you can run, and you can go play with these SharePoint APIs mm -hmm. that Jeremy and his team have been working on. So big thank you again, and uh, please give us any feedback. <laughs>